to order if uh, everybody could stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Check it because we might hit it. Since this is the first meeting after the election, uh, we need a we need a, a board chair. So I will accept nominations for a board chair. I will nominate Tony Nelson, the board chair. This is ridiculous. I see. Is that a strong second, Tom? Absolutely. Uh, do we have any other nominations for chair? Hearing none. All in favor of Judy being chair? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you all very much. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll we'll, um, we'll uh, do the call to order now, please. <laughs> we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll go back up just a right. tad and do the call to order now. Roll Judy call. Nelson? Yes. Tom Coons? Yep. Emily Leach. She's excused. Aaron Cavanaugh here. Mike Blau. Yep, Blau, you got it here. Thank you. Um, and, and we've elected a chair. On, welcome uh, back to Aaron and welcome Mike. It's good to have you here. Uh, so we'll, we'll carry on now. So we've uh, just elected a chair. The next order of business is to elect a vice chair. I'd like to nominate. I'd like to nominate. Aaron Cavanaugh as our vice chair. I'll okay, second for Mike. I'll second. Second for Mike. And yeah, and I'm, the others, uh, since we've dealt with everybody there, uh, anyone, anyone did you'd like to nominate? Sure. Um, all in favor of Aaron Cavanaugh being vice chair signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Aaron is vice chair. So, secretary is sort of a. Um, We've been elected a secretary for the last few years. It, it, it seems to be a ceremonial position. We, we, no, we have not had a secretary do anything, have we? No. Emily's not here to mention anything that comes in when she needs to. But. So, do we have do we have to have a secretary? Um, I don't know the answer to that. But I suppose we can leave it open, and I can check. Okay. How, how do how, how do the rest of the board feel about that? Um, it makes sense not to if. That person doesn't actually do anything. I don't think. I mean, it, or it could be a ceremonial time. I guess, you know, yeah. So either way. But. I'll check on that. And if you don't okay. need one, then that's fine. If, if we do, then we can uh, do it at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate that. Um, we, then we're going to now talk about committee assignments. And um, for Mike's benefit, we'll, I'll try to explain a little bit and, and ask. Oh, no. I was just going to. So yes, well, uh, you know, we're not going to speak at the same time, so if you'd like to... No, 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 this is completely on the side, just so... Yes, I It's while you're explaining, so it might be. No, it's got nothing to do with, with this. I was just going to suggest something. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Wow. This is a tough room. This is a tough room. <laughs> so, yeah. Where is Andrea on the here? So the committees uh, are... And, and for... And, our, our, well, our, the negotiations committee, which we usually have two board members sit on that. The budget committee, where we name, uh, where we have one uh, board member and usually an alternate because it takes a lot of work. The budget meet is very heavy work during uh, October, November, December into January. Uh, the New Hampshire School Board Association delegate. There is a New Hampshire School Board Association annual meeting in January. And we usually name one person and an alternate uh, for that. Uh, although I do not believe we have attended as a board for a couple of years simply because of weather and a bunch of other things we haven't done. Uh, we also have a couple of other, we have a um, wellness uh, committee that's coming up and we've already named some, we'll review that. Uh, we, we, we've already named a board member, we'll review that at the end. And we have a newly formed sort of building committee, and we have a board member named to that, which we'll review at the end, too, to make sure everyone wants to go forward with that. Have I missed anything on committees? So. Official committees? I don't think so. Okay. So first up is negotiations, and, and this uh, entails uh, uh, 
meeting formally with the union uh, to negotiate a contract. Uh, we, all, we have our one-year contract for this coming year, and uh, as soon as possible, we'll, we'll start negotiating for the following year. So, and, and it's not it's not entirely necessary that we set it tonight necessarily. So, um, you know, we can uh, but we can talk about people who might be interested in uh, being on the negotiating committee. Tony would like to. Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, just in terms of spreading out, do you know if Emily is interested in doing budget committee again? That's a very good question. I I did ask her. And she didn't answer. So I'm assuming that in her absence, we will just, you know, appoint her, and then and then and we'll, we can rearrange these things. Okay. As we do, these are committees that it, you know we can fill in as we need to. Are, are you interested in doing budget? Is that why you mentioned that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if she wasn't, I would do it. But in that case, I wouldn't probably also do another committee. I see. That makes sense. Um, About negotiations. And I think it all depends, too, on how that looks and feels as far as the number of meetings and how much we actually get accomplished. I felt this year's went, it just went too, too long, too many. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't, we, why don't we wait, why don't we hold off a little bit on forming that committee and, and get it, kind of get a sense of what we think is a, a good way, a good approach, and then, and then talk, you know, the board come up with, with an approach or... Um, Perhaps something a little different this year. I don't know how it's going to work out. Maybe something a little different this year, and, and see how that works, and then see who's best suited to, to do that negotiation. Why don't we do that? Okay. In that case, in that case, why don't we leave all the committee assignments then for another time? Uh, with budget, we'll need someone before the April meeting. Um, and I, I was just going to suggest that we sort of name Emily, and I don't mind being the alternate, and perhaps and maybe you I know, being the alternate. Um, so so. Yeah, and then if that if she's not interested in it, we can yeah. regroup. All right, so we're going to leave committee assignments. Now, no one is being really named to committee assignments, although we, we will review. Um, Tom uh, volunteered uh, during um, prior to the elections to be to be sort of a, uh, the board rep on sort of a building committee to meet with uh, to meet with Rich and, and and Dick on things. And I know that started. We'll be having some discussions later on. In our agenda, so Tom, really thank you for doing that because I think uh, I think it'll be helpful to have that board input there. And the wellness committee, um, I volunteered to be on, and and I think we'll be starting to meet sometime coming up. So I don't know when that will be, but just people know that that's what's going on. All right, thank you. We will move on. Um, co opening comments by visitors. Gail, Gail yeah, from Clark School Nurse. Um, could I just ask for the board perhaps to suspend the rules when it gets to the discussion on the school day, but the, the final class day snow day discussion? Yes. All right. So as we're opposed to under the business. Now. Yeah. Either now or later when when it's current well, discussion. Wait, you, you you would like us not to have that discussion? Well, I would like to be part of that. Oh, if possible. <laughs> so that's, that's okay. <laughs> she wants an open discussion. Yeah, I, I'm uh, certainly fine. Certainly having having the union represented, uh, I think would be fine okay. to have anyone else. Any objections? No, no, no. Oh. I expect to be a part of that. And and by being open, it'll be it'll be including you as a, 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 it. It, it's, it might it might not be open to the public, but it'll be open to okay. to, to school re to the staff representation. Okay. To be clear, Celia, Celia Leopold, Washington Street, Rollinsford. Um, will you be discussing tonight? Um, any of the health concerns that have come up nationwide, the coronavirus yes. and um, school extensions. Yes. Uh, I just saw that Connecticut waived their 180 days, and I was just wondering if that would be addressed. Well, it, it's on the agenda, and uh, Superintendent Gadonski will be uh, covering that as we will be covering where we are at this moment. As we all know, it is a day-to-day, -day, it's a day-to-day -day thing, community, community, state by state. So he'll, he'll be doing that later. Any other opening comments? I would just like to say we had, unfortunately, it was the lowest turnout um, in, 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 in sort of recorded history for a March vote. It is our second year of SB2, and it was the lowest turnout. So that means it's the, it's the second year we have not had a town meeting to do our, 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 our voting, and it is now 
The first year was very low. This year is even lower. It's unfortunate. However, it was very, very, uh, it was very uh, good turnout. I thank everyone who worked on getting signs out, getting voters out. Um, it was very uh, the all school related issues that we wanted to pass passed, and those that we did not want to pass did not pass. So uh, thank you all for all your efforts. It was very, very helpful. All right, we, uh, no other comments from visitors. We'll move on. Uh, consent calendar. Uh, we have our January board minutes, our February and March enrollment. Uh, what is the pleasure of the board on? I make a motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion <coughs> carries. Turn it over to announcements and communications. We'll start with um, Dr. Gadonski with the uh, COVID-19 update. Well, before I do that, I just want to uh, extend my appreciation and congratulations to everybody. The, the vote that went through, I mean, the budget passed uh, very well. This collective bargaining agreement, the withdrawal, uh, that just shows a lot of hard work and it shows a lot of collaboration with the staff and the school board and the budget committee and the withdrawal committee. Um, I think Rollinsford has a lot to be proud of, of all of those groups working together. So I think that's very well done on everybody's part and, and certainly a, a nice step for the school and for the district. So thank you very much. As far as the COVID-19 update, um, it, it, it literally is changing hour to hour. Uh, I have had webinars and conference calls and meetings with, with the Tri-City uh, uh, Consortium as well as the Governor, the, the uh, Commissioner of Education, um, and I think I have learned a great deal in the last week and a half. Um, the, the, what people need to remember is this is a highly contagious flu. That's what it is. It's a flu. Um, and the fear, what they're, what they're trying to do is mitigate the extent, that, the speed that it comes on. Um, what they're trying to avoid is, is what happened in China and, and Italy where all of a sudden everybody got sick. And it overwhelmed their health care, uh, it overwhelmed the infrastructure, and the efforts in the United States and certainly in New Hampshire are to slow that when, when people get sick, much like the flu season that we see normally. To slow that down so if people get ill, they can receive the appropriate attention that, that they need. Um, at the present time, schools are, um, we're, we're not looking to close. The, the recommendation from the, the governor and the commissioner is to business as usual with common sense. Now, we're looking at every single field trip, they're discouraging trips to, uh, certainly, um, uh, international trips. Um, they're discouraging out-of-state trips if they are to Washington, D.C., New York City, those types of things, common sense. Uh, more local field trips right now um, are, are acceptable. There's, a, there's kind of a, a, a risk assessment that, that we do whenever there's a trip that's coming up, and we'll continue to do that and make the appropriate decisions for that. As far as school goes, um, we're taking every precaution. We are obviously upping the cleaning, uh, teaching everybody, including adults, to wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, uh, distancing between people. Most importantly, probably, is if you're sick or if your child is sick, stay home. That's probably the single most important thing that, that we can do. Um, so those, the, those uh, we'll go by those recommendations. CDC and uh, De Department of Health and Human Services put out the recommendations daily. They adjust those. Um, the other piece that we're keeping a careful eye on is that if anybody has done international travel and is coming back, um, then they're going to be self-quarantined for 14 days. If there are people that we identify that, that may be a relative or somebody that has COVID-19 or you were with somebody, um, then you're self-quarantined uh, for 14 days. So reasonable precautions. Again, this is, this is a flu uh, disease, bacteria, um, so we need to treat it like that. So we're, we're taking, as it changes, 
Uh, I'll be sending home information weekly, if not sooner. Um, but uh, we're keeping an eye on it, and uh, at the present time, it's, it's business as usual at school. Thank you. Does the board have any questions on the? I mean, it, it's 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 quite <clears throat> a uh, media hype right now, but we're, we're we're progressing. I'm just curious if the board has any specific questions. Well, I, I think being in elementary school, we don't have the. Um, we don't have far reaches for, for sports uh, or, or other events that are going on. I, I saw in the principal's notes that um, the uh, Marshwood didn't have their, uh, their what they invited the sixth grade to, that they canceled that. Was that due to the... Um, I don't think so. That, that, was, was, a, that was a different reason earlier. Okay. So I guess not really. Um, Obviously, obviously, I think you would keep us informed, at least the board informed, um, if there were any cases within the school system. I, I would assume that. that. Sure. Um, okay. Are we yeah. doing anything different as far as how we maintain and clean the building? Uh, Rich and, and Dick and I have had some conversations, um, obviously upping the frequency of the cleaning, um, having hand sanitizer everywhere. <laughs> um, and, and Basically, teaching the kids to up their hygiene and, and, and you know their hand washing and covering coughs and those types of things. It's an education for all of us. I think my hands have never been so clean, uh, but it, it's a it's a good reminder to all of us. One of, one other thing that I might add is um, the guidance on uh, events, gatherings, uh, meetings like this. The the guidance so far has been. Uh, business as usual with common sense. Uh, if it's an in-district gathering, like a music concert or something like that, um, then that would, at this time, with the risk that we have, that's acceptable and, and it's, it's not uh, meant to be canceled. If it were a, um, let's say we were doing a craft fair here on a Saturday and we're, we're pulling people in from different communities, then maybe we might not want to do that. Maybe we might want to cancel something like that. So it's looking at each thing individually and, and assessing the risk and then moving forward. All right. And I, I believe you do send um, information home. I believe the bus company is also doing more more cleaning. and. Right. The, I talked to First Student. They've been uh, very proactive in, in upping their um, sanit sanit sanitizing of the buses, doing it, you know, before, or after, during, if they need to. Um, so, obviously, you know, the cleaner that we can keep it with, with, the, with the disinfectant, the, the slower the progression is going to be. We also heard from Cafe Service Cafe Service, right. well. Thank you. Service so, they're upping their um, protocols. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think everybody is understanding that it, this is kind of a team effort. Excellent. I was wondering if the building is being used at all by uh, any groups who are primarily elderly. Um, I know that we've got some, I mean, I can hear the basketballs now, so yeah. the adult basketball league, but I, I don't know about the elderly. I wasn't sure if the building, you know, if they, if anybody ever, you know, requested room to, or, or to use. Yeah. Just because, you know. Right. And they're still saying that, that the, the most at-risk people right. are the elderly right. um, and anybody that's already compromised, whether it's a, a heart condition or a, a lung condition or something that, that uh, you know, might offer them a little bit less resistance to it. So um, children and, and younger adults so far have been the least hit, and, you know, hopefully that, that's the case. It remains that way. I think we do have to keep in mind, though, that due to the definition of elderly, even though some of us don't really feel that we belong in that category, we are, and we do have a number of staff. Uh, well, I've been looked at that way. <laughs> 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 not, not there yet, Tom, but, um, but uh, we do have staff who are in that category, so we also have to be uh, cognizant of that. So we want to make sure everybody's safe. Right. So as it as it as it changes, I'll I'll get the information out, uh, and, and I would anticipate that that's going to be uh, weekly, if not uh, mm -hmm. more frequently. Okay. 
And that's my update for tonight's one. Thank you. I will say, too, that we're hearing similar information from the Marshwood District. There have been a couple emails this week about it. Um, they're looking into distance learning and things like that as kind of a last resort, but they're very much staying on top of it, just as the same way that you detailed, and upping their cleaning and all that stuff, too. Yeah, we're meeting as a, a in, in SAU 56 as an administrative team tomorrow to talk about um, remote learning and what that might look like. We're not there yet. We're not thinking about doing that yet. Two weeks down the road, four weeks down, who knows? Um, so we're having that discussion, what it might look like. The commissioner has said that if we do remote learning, then it would count as a day, um, mm -hmm. just like a regular school day, and it's up to us to manage what that might look like. Obviously, it's not going to have the the rigor and fidelity that, that kids in school. I mean, they need that experience. Nothing nothing takes the place of, of humans, uh, teachers. Um, but that's something that we're talking about tomorrow, just to kind of get prepared. Is the Department of Education are they leaving us up to the the districts, or are they very know, much so? Issue? All right. Very much so. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the CDC guidelines and the DHHS guidelines uh, on, on you know how to manage this have been pretty useful to us and that's something that I review every day. Um, the Department of Education has um, left it up to the local districts to make many of the decisions. It's, kind of, it's interesting, it's a big decision because we know we have students um, here and in Marshwood who, who, who are dependent upon the, on the food programs and um, certainly special needs students um, who, who will not do well if they don't get the, 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 the instruction and the care they need and, and all those things. So, so I know it's a big decision as we go forward. I did get an email too from the State Food Service mm -hmm. people saying that if there was a shutdown, they're looking at options Absolutely. to have limited access to the buildings mm -hmm. to be able to provide the food to, to students who need it for free. Just like they do this on the so that's, that's on you know that's on their radar as well. That is excellent. And I guess the last question I would have is um, is that as as you have your meeting tomorrow for SAU 56, also to keep in mind that um, checking in occasionally with Marshwood because we have families obviously, sure. um, and that if Marshwood closes, it's going to make a big difference, or if we close, it's going to make a difference to those families and the students in both, yeah. both places. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Anything else? I know this is this is on everybody's mind because it's about all we hear on the radio now these days on TV. All right, so we will. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll have more discussions on that. Uh, Rich, your uh, principal's update. It looked an awful lot like February's update. Well, <laughs> well I, that's a joke. I figured it was still relevant. <laughs> yes. It, yes. Um, the hard thing is we had a number of school cancellations, as you know, and it seemed like. Thursday was just wiped off the calendar for a month or so. Mm. Um, so yeah, a lot of what I put into this one was just a carryover because we didn't, you know, meet, and I wanted to make sure that you uh, did get a second look at it. Um, a couple of things that are a little bit newer. Um, we did hold a winter concert. Um, since our last meeting. It was Mr. Wells' first winter concert, um, hugely attended, and um, the kids did a phenomenal job. We've got um, a band made up of probably 90% of first year students, um, which, you know, after three or four months to actually be able to perform in front of a crowd and play together, um, it, it, it was amazing. It was amazing. We had um, three or four kids volunteer to um, try a solo or a duet. Uh, those were cute. And then our powerful 11 member chorus <laughs> got up and belted out three songs. And you would think there were 50 kids up there. They were so amazing. Um, the tiny little guys just, and you could hear it word for word. It was really clear. Had nothing to do with the new sound system. It was their voices. Um, so it was great. Um, Mr. Wells got a lot of positive feedback afterwards, which was good for him because you know he's never formally taught music before. He's done things on the side, and 
you know, it, this was a new experience for him. That I thought it was great. Well, it's not really fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, this okay. was, this was by far yeah. the best five ever. Yeah, for I've sure. Ever seen. That's yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, my daughter's never, she's never played an instrument before, I don't know. Nope. Yeah, and they just got right up there, and yeah, this was really, really good. And I went up and said something to Mr. Wells as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, and and he's like, geez, I really can tell your daughter practices this. I'm like, she does? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. really good. That sounds like a good one. forward to the next one. Everybody yeah, it was, was wonderful. Very good. Yeah. And he opened up the chorus to new members after the concert, and he's, I believe he's got a half a dozen students who said, no, I'm in, because we held a in-school um, concert the next day, um, which we think is important for kids to, you know, perform in front of their peers, and um, a raving success again, and, you know, we got, you know, half a dozen new students, so hopefully we'll continue to grow and um, perform for you folks. That's fantastic, and good, good find with Mr. Wells, it sounds like, excellent. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, a little further down in my report, I wanted to highlight the water testing that's been ongoing since last summer. Um, we are at the point of completion. Uh, we have done all of the testing. You know, I've kept you sort of up to date as we've gone along. Um, Dick did a great job of you know doing it one step at a time instead of sending everything and then having to start over. He'd, you know, go with one faucet, make sure all of that was done get the sample, it's approved, then move on to the next one. Um, and um, he's at the point where I believe he's put all the receipts um, for the materials and the supplies and everything together. And if he hasn't sent it on um, to the environmental services, he's in the process, but he will get up to a 50% financial return from that. Excellent. So a little bit added bonus to get some money back. Um, what else did I want to highlight? The, you brought up the um, talent show. One of our transition activities for our kids was going to the talent show at um, North Shore Middle School last year. And um, we were told that it was canceled this year. I didn't get a reason okay. why. I don't know if there just weren't enough entrants or what. But um, uh, Mr. Bourbon did say if there were other events that came up, you know, as we moved through the spring that he thought would be appropriate for our kids to come over, then he would definitely reach out to us. And, um, I told him that we are looking forward to him coming back either late April or early May with a couple of kids like he did last year. He did a nice job of coming and answering questions of sixth graders. Um, and our sixth graders have been compiling questions for a couple oh, months. <laughs> so they're going to be ready for him. Mm -hmm. um, so he is still interested in doing that. And then we have step up day uh, the last Friday in May. I will go over and do our you know, half a day following the model schedule and having lunch and all of those fun things. And then on the first page, there were a couple of um, sort of discussion mm -hmm. action items that I had needed from the board in February. Um, and I'll just I'll talk about the wellness committee first because we were starting to form that in the January meeting, I believe. Um, and I reached out to uh, parents and asked for any interest. And I put in my report that I had three parents get back to me expressing interest. Um, and because there were only three, I, I thought it would be appropriate to invite all of them to be a part of that. But I didn't want to do that on my own. I figured I should, you know, see what the of the board is. Um, Katie obviously is a part of that, myself, Mrs. O'Connor, um, and I didn't have any other staff members step up, but you know I can also put it back out to them again to see if somebody else is. And Kevin the nurse. Oh, didn't we also talk about having uh, Janie Mulligan? Janie's also on it, right? So, I, mean, I know she's not. Oh, yes. I, know, I know she's not she technically knows. staff here, but uh, yes. I mean, she is staff. Yep, she said that. She is she, staff. You know, we needed her to come. She'd yeah. be willing to come as yeah. well. And if not, Beth, uh, the food service director, would also. Okay. She all, she comes to the ones in Summers so yeah. I'm sure she would come here as well. If Janet couldn't. Okay. So that would be eight of us with three parents, and I didn't know what size committee. I mean, you were the board rep, so. The board rep, but I, I also am, am am understanding that it's really it's not it's not a board's committee. It's really 
your, it's really Bob, it's really your committee, it's, yeah. it's an administrative committee, so, um, so while, while the board could weigh in if you'd like us to, I don't I think if we've got three yeah, interested yeah. people, yeah. bring them along. Yeah, yeah. That's my opinion. yeah because they may not all be able to come each yeah. time, so mm -hmm. at least we're hopefully guaranteed that at least one paragraph in our meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll reach out to those three listed in my report and let them know tomorrow that you know we'd like to welcome them to the committee if they're still interested. And we did set up a page on the website for wellness, so if there's things that we want to put on there, just oh, let okay. me know and I can put them up there. Perfect. Um, and then the second thing was um, the playground committee had come forward uh, back in the fall and let you know about you know their initial um, work and plans and we said we'd keep coming back and we'd check in and and also get approval when needed from the board. Um, so we were at a point where we were able to write a grant to Timberland Corporation and it was due the day after the February board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so I did put in for the grant, and what I did was I, I started and said, you know, some of this work is um, based upon approval from the board and review by our insurance company. Um, we have not heard whether or not we've been uh, selected for the program that they do. It's a volunteer program that they go out twice a year to different entities and do volunteer work for a day. Um, they've also had um, a devastating incident on their premises uh, where they were shut down for a week um, last month. So just prior to the grant being uh, due, uh, they were told that they couldn't be entering the building because of that. Um, so I have not had communication with them. The next step is they're going to do a site visit and then after the site visit, they will say whether or not we've been selected. Um, so, do you know what the? Uh, I realize timing is maybe thrown off, but uh, were they bef in the initial stages? Did you know what t the timing you were looking for? Or they were looking for? Yeah, their volunteer day is in the middle of May, oh. and it's on a school day. Okay. So. One of my standing questions for them is, have you done this on a school day? How does that work? You know, because the work is on our playground, does that mean, you know, obviously we can't have kids out on the playground that day. Um, if there's equipment here, you know, we'll need signs, that type of stuff. So um, those, I've got questions ready for uh, the representative if we are selected. Um, because that was a concern of mine too. Right? Yeah, Initially, we thought it was on the weekend. But. Mm. So the, the um, six items that we were looking to do are listed there, and some of them are fairly basic. They're things that you know Dick and his crew have picked away at a little bit here and there. But you know, because of other priorities, you know, we've got a group willing to come in and volunteer to you know hang this out in a day for us. It, it would really at least help spruce up our playground, um, not do the things that ultimately we'd like to do, like replace equipment and you know, those type of things. And number four um, mm. would specifically be only if we are able to secure the material for the fitness trail. Mm -hmm. um, the committee is looking at ways um, to solicit donations um, for the material that we would need to construct the trail itself. That, that trail doesn't um, significantly cut into the playground space, does it? I mean, it's going to be around the edges, around the outside, is that...? Yeah, there were pieces. The one thing that we didn't think of initially were, you know, the trees don't just grow above ground, they grow below ground, and the most important part is below ground. So my initial thought was we've got a fence line, we can go right along yeah. the fence line, but there's spots where there's not enough room width-wise, so we had to come out, but we couldn't come out just beyond the tree because then we'd be cutting down into the roots. Uh, but we felt like we were far enough away, we were behind the soccer field so the goals weren't interfered with along the fence line so the softball field's not interfered with. So if those things come back in the future, it would compromise gameplay or practices. Um, and then over on the playground, we went um, down into that little area that's fenced in and then up behind the equipment um, so it wouldn't interfere with any of the current equipment. 
And if we replace any of that equipment in the future, you know, we can even move it out a little bit further. And, and is the entire area fenced th that the trail would run beside? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Our, we envision it starting on this side, mm -hmm. over near this fence, going out and around the fence line, and ending uh, behind the baseball fence. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with signage sort of directing people back, um, we didn't feel like cutting through the field and the swing sets and all that would be appropriate. So, seems wise. Yeah, people can do laps, just come down the hill and across the driveway and start again. Um, and do so, you know, if they do one circuit, then they're getting 10 exercises. If they do two, they get 20 exercises. Um, and the length of it was just under two tenths of a mile, so not quite a quarter mile track, but. The rest of the items are, you know, basically they're just sprucing the area up and prepping it for other work, like moving one of the softball fences mm -hmm. so that the trail can go behind it. There wasn't enough room. Um, but the gentleman that came out to look at it said, you know, it's easy enough. There's just one fence. You pull out of the ground and swing it over and put it back in. Right. And I know, and I know the board did ask to, to be kept informed and to, to approve of sort of the changes that were going to happen. There. Any questions from from the board? Or thoughts? Sounds great. Seems like it's a little bit up in the air, but we'll move it forward. Yeah. So I, so I would say that probably by consensus. Um, I hope hope it moves forward, and you are planning on doing it this year. If, if, I mean, that's the, the hope you just don't know. Yeah, because of what's going on with them. Right. And, you know, some places are shut right. down now. Right. And, and, and <laughs> may just be, and, and yeah, and we don't know. I, I, know that, I know that they do it on a work day, so, yeah. for them. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, so ideally it would be this spring um, if they're selecting us, number one, and then the availability and making sure that, you know, everything passes through our... Mm -hmm. on insurance. Mm -hmm. okay. so, but I'll keep you up to date and let you know as we progress. And if not, we'll postpone it and keep planning and fundraising. Anyway, so by consensus, the board um, says, you know, keep going and we hope you'll grow what's up. Great. Rich, do you need any formal motion for the grant or is, oh. is this acceptable? Yeah, it's not really a grant, it's a service project that they do. So this is a, just this enough? Just to yeah, I just want to make sure. What do you mean in terms of like accepting a donation kind of thing? Yeah. The kind of thing we might yeah. have to do, yeah. There's no money that they're giving us. It's just the... Okay, so just, the just board approvals. Okay. Yeah. And it's, thank you, Bob, for thinking of that. And I, I just wanted to ask about all, all ten students on the um, on the invention convention going forward to uh, going forward to, to the UNH. Is that is that unusual to have all of the students selected, or does that happen? It's been different each year, and there was a little confusion this year. Um, we've had years where there were significantly more kids in our school mm -hmm. convention, and we couldn't send all of them to represent the school. Um, but typically when there's less kids in the past, they have sent all. Um, so this year, initially, some of the judges were basing their scores on prior years, and we initially selected half the students. Um, and other judges were saying, you know, all the kids are going, and there was some misinformation. So, but anyway, they're all... They're, yeah. yeah, they're invited to go. It's up to the families right. whether they take them or not. If, well, if, if, indeed, if, indeed, if, indeed, if indeed it gets held in late March, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's at Southern New Hampshire University, so I, I haven't heard whether they've kept it or not. Okay. I know they're going on. I'm seeing <laughs> nods to the negative in the back, but we'll yeah. see. Anyway, you'll, you'll hear officially about the time. All right, thank you. Any other questions on his principles mm -hmm. update? Thank you, Rich. We have the high school rep here from Marshwood, Nick Garapi. So Nick, uh, you're on. Thank Nick, you. have you met our new uh, board member, Michael Blau? I have not. Nick nice Garvey. Nick's a senior, so don't get attached to him. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be leaving us very soon. Um, so I think it's probably best to start with sports because everything else kind of transitions into itself. Um, so winter sports season has basically come to a close. 
um, boys basketball lost in the quarterfinals to Falmouth in the playoffs. Um, the girls did win the state championship. They beat uh, Hampton Academy 42 to 32. And it was their first title in 25 years. Wow. Ooh, so we're really proud did, of them. Did we have some? Uh, oh, yeah. No. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Angelina Bison. We have like six. Right. Six rounds yeah. per day? Six rounds per day. Yeah. Angelina. Yeah. Angelina, 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 Angelina was like the second highest scorer in the game. So she was a big part of that win. She's all right. Awesome. I'm glad we can do our part. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then hockey is kind of a weird situation. They take the top 12 teams for playoffs, but there's only 13 teams in the league. <laughs> uh -oh. So, uh -oh. so they only won two games, but they still were in 12. So they got to the playoffs, but they lost in the first round. Oh, um, so they made the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> two trips that happened was the trip to Tanzania. Um, and seven girls from the high school in all grades went on a service learning trip there where they it was it was coordinated with the EF educational tours and the Me to We charity and they helped gather water and they dug a, the foundation for one of the homes there and they just got to spend a lot of time playing with all the kids. Um, so that was a really cool opportunity for them. And then additionally, there was a trip you may have heard of to Italy. <laughs> uh, that they, they got out of there in the nick of time. <laughs> it was, I believe, a day or two before everything kind of wow. blew up there. So um, they, they made it out, and it looked like a really fun trip. And they just were really there as like, sightseers and tourists, not really doing anything big, but just for the experience. And that, and that group has all remained healthy. Yes. So that kind of gets me into the next topic, which is uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus stuff. So most of it, um, just the same stuff that the superintendent said, just like um, a lot of extra precautions being taken, along with the cleaning every night. There's also deep cleanings happening on the weekends. Um, and there are being plans put in place for um, out-of-school learning, which we don't know exactly how that's going to work yet, but it looks like it's going to be through Google Classroom with either live streams or just like posting notes or learning material online to be able to, I guess, continue the best we can with our education. Um, and those days at home will be counted as school, school days. Um, and the district is really just following the guidance of the CDC in the main CDC, so it's going to be completely up to the district. But if the CDC says that it's probably a good idea to close the school, then we will. Um, and today was the first day that there was a confirmed case in Maine. So, mm -hmm. um, like, again, day-to-day -day thing, hour-to-hour -hour thing, no idea what's going to happen, but um, steps are being made to just make sure that we're prepared. So, Excellent. yes. Um, so then, Coming up for the rest of this month, if if uh, <laughs> this stuff happens tomorrow, there is the yearly dodgeball tournament held by the Interact Club at the high school. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's. I think there's 17 teams this year, teams of six, and uh, just like a basic double elimination bracket. You get prizes for the best named team and the best uh, costume design team, I guess. And all the proceeds from the tournament go to the Australian wildfires. So it's partially a lot of fun, partially for a good cause. Um, Is that high school or middle school and high school? Uh, just high school. Yeah. Um, on April 1st is the junior planning day at the high school. So this is just basically a big class meeting for the juniors in the auditorium where there's a slideshow where the guidance counselors go through a bunch of different options for kids in their upcoming years, whether it's college or a job or the military or whatnot. Um, and 
there's also speakers, so they have a couple teachers come in and talk about their experiences. They have some people in the military come in, they have people who um, just went right to work out of high school. And then they also have a couple of students, so this year I'm one of the speakers as someone who is going into um, athletics in college. There's also someone going to community college, something in gap year. So they have a bunch of different options for just giving the kids basically a big uh, range of options and just kind of preparing for, the, for their senior year so they kind of know what direction they want to go into. Um, the day after that is the science augmentation testing, which is, um, I guess, just like a main testing thing where they can they get information about the academic progress of the students and the school in general. So it's kind of just like a generic standardized test that will give the state an idea of how Marshall's doing in is regards it, to science. Is every grade in the high school tested, or is it just certain grades that are um, tested? Or don't, don't you know? I'm just, just curious. I believe it's sophomores and juniors, but I could be wrong about that. I don't know for sure. Meaning you're not you're not cramming for I'm the not, test, is what you're telling me. I'm right? not. Seniors are not a part of that. Okay. Um, and the last thing I have is the day after that, April 3rd, is the end of the third quarter. Busy times. Yes. So, um, any questions about COVID-19 or in general? Mm -hmm. Well done, Nick. Thank you for the, all the updates. Um, we, we, we know our days are dwindling with you, so we're happy to see you every time uh, we do. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in April. Stay healthy. Try my best. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know, you could stay, but also you're free to leave. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to the financial update. Maybe yep. attached uh, and put it in your packet. Yep. Um, I mentioned in my last update, which we didn't have, mm -hmm. but we had a couple of students who were in the Ten Marshall Middle and High School. Um, they do have significant special education needs, so I've encumbered um, their services for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. It was about $60,000. Mm -hmm. However, we had savings going into this year for students, you know, regular tuition, so we're still okay. Um, we did also receive um, our first invoice, well, yeah, the first half of the year from Dover Career Tech Center, because we pay for our loans yes. for students to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, that was about $12,000, so... Mm -hmm. I did reach out to them, though. They did have one student on there who had moved mm -hmm. to South Berwick, so oh, I thank you. asked them to please remove that student because <laughs> it was no longer Rollinson's responsibility. So, But that 12000 is taking that person off, so um, that's encumbered in this update as well. Um, and then the revenue is attached to, but there really was no significant changes in the last one. No, it's just the other one. No changes in the <laughs> other We rarely get that unexpected revenue. Yeah, so... <laughs> So, uh, questions from the board, thoughts, questions from the board on your... I also have your um, forms to fill out for your stipends, um, so I think that you guys can pull them out and them back to me. Okay. I mean, certainly overall, oh, the overall picture looks good. Um, there are a few things that still are not yet encumbered. I, I assume it'll come out. Like for instance, um, the board services. I mean, those will as soon as we fill out our stipends, that, yeah. will, that will that be will encumbered be, yeah. and come down. Yeah. Um, so, any thoughts or uh, questions from the board to ask? No? So it looks like we're in good shape. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you very much for keeping us up to date on all that, and for you know you and Nancy for keeping an eye on all the special ed stuff that goes around. That's a bit of work. All right. So. That's the uh, budget update. So then we'll just sort of um, we'll just have a quick review of the deliberative session. It seems like a long time ago now. It, it was uh, it was a long time ago now. And I think we <laughs> I keep saying, why are we still seeing the deliberative pre presentation in our yeah. in our packet? And it's because we were I actually to said to Alice, hey, why is that still on there? <laughs> and then I said, Oh yes, we haven't discussed it yet. I think, in general, I think we're all disappointed in the numbers of people that show up. We're very happy that the people who do show up do, but it's a very small group of people. Um, but I thought the presentation went very well, and certainly appreciate um, Dr. Jelonski uh, stepping in and, and, and doing most of the presentation along with some of the board members. So. Any other? Uh, I agree. I thought it went really well. Um, 
the presentation is clear and easy to understand, and I know that um, the people who are there really appreciate that, so thank you. Yeah, here it gets a little bit better. Yeah. You know, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And then we take the feedback, you know, from our own meetings too, things that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And it's really just being able to, you know, it's, you know, it's communicating things in easy to understand terms. Mm -hmm. folks. So, yeah, and then when they do have questions here. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's why it's, it's, it helps to have those concise sort of um, presentations of, of each of each warrant article and uh, be able to answer it that way. Yeah. So thank you. Uh, quick discussions, anyway. And a very positive, very very positive review <laughs> on all of that for for all of the sort of Sign up yeah, we're just going to discuss it how it's the first time it was at the town hall. Oh. That, that, that's why we're going to discuss that when we get there. All right, so now under new business, um, the snow day discussion. This has to do with the number of snow, no, no school days. They weren't all, all snow days. One was a, an electrical outage day that happened just on Rawlsford because it was only just this part <laughs> of Rawlsford. The rest of us were fine. So, Gail, you're happy to join us in this, in, in this um, discussion, but we'll let. Um, Dr. Gadonski, kick it off. Yeah, just an update. At, at this point, the the uh, with the no school days that we had, we're looking at June 25th is the, the last day of school right now. Uh, that's a Thursday, so you know if we should happen to get a late March blizzard, uh, <laughs> we, we still have. It happens, but we, yeah. We still have one more day before we kick into the final day. Uh, that just that we did have some, you know, I put March 20 down there. That's a professional development day. If if we decided to, we could use that as a student day and and, and back up one day. But you know that would simply put us to the 24th of, of June, which is a Wednesday. So um, I guess my recommendation at this point is is leave it where it is and. Um, you know, like I said, we've got one more day to stay in that same week if we if we absolutely need to. Any thoughts about changing the length of the school day to maybe make up some time? Yeah, I mean, Rich and I have talked about a number of different things, and and it's a possibility you could do that. Um, you have to be careful with your buses because you you. Your bus routes are such that you know there's only so much flexibility in, in, in how you can move that day around. Um, I, I'm also I, I, I've done that in other districts because of the uh, you know the number of days in that particular year with the snow. Um, I mean I'm always sensitive of I, I don't want it to be lost time either. You know some districts add 10 or 15 minutes over a period of time and it turns into lost wasted time. Um, so I, you know we got to be careful with that as well. Uh, if we were if we were you know bumping into that last few days of June into a new week, I, I would be concerned about that. Um, but you know it is late. It's later than usual. Um, but you know it's not out of the ordinary. And we've had years like that. Gail, do you want to join in here or? Yeah, I would love to. I, I just have, just, it's not PowerPoint or anything special, but just something we put down on paper. This is, um, this is not new. This is, uh, from, comes from two years ago. We had, um, actually like eight days to make up to work. <laughs> and, um, so this, the figures look a lot like our previous admin had kind of figured out. Sorry. I don't know who you are. I'm Tasha. Oh, Hi, Tasha. Nice to, to meet you. Rich, do you want to look at this? No, it's very much like what looks like. Uh, no, that's that's different because because originally we had thought about again canceling that March 20th day, but since it's next week, oh, it's not fair it's to families. We didn't think to to um, swap that day for the end of um, June, but. Um, Still possibly looking at just shortening it. 
looking at our Marshwood siblings who um, would be ending like the 12th, actually. Rumor had, I mean, theirs would bounce into, they had one more day or a half a day they would have to do, but I'm hearing rumors that they might eliminate their Thursday delayed starts, like they've done in the past, to end on the 12th still, June 12th. Um, that's, we have a lot of siblings um, and families that, you know, going until the 25th, it's, um, it's a lot longer. So I got a full uh, stream of emails um, just asking um, association members you know, that's, what, just what are their thoughts, that's all. Um, not a single one said, yes, let's go to the 25th. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, yay, yay, maybe we'll have another snow day even. Um, they had worked, most, except for I think two had worked um, before when we actually added 45 minutes to the day. Um, and swapped out some PD days. Um, so their thoughts were, you know, not, not stressing to end on the 17th, that's the original day, that's not really reality, but maybe going to, to that Friday. So it would be a week longer than our siblings at Marshwood. Um, and consider swapping out our May PD day, working it out at the end. Um, the teachers would come back on June 22nd, which is a Monday. But have the kids still be done on that Friday. Um, I know we have kindergarten work, uh, like open house that day, and I, that happened two years ago as well. It was last On the PD day. But it also happened, I believe, two years ago when uh, we rescheduled the PD day. Um, and I'm pretty sure the uh, kindergarten aid and possibly substitutes ran. Um, kept the kids um, in class, they didn't cancel their day. It was a, it was a student day instead. Um, but that still would leave um, three days. If we'd make up two in June, the 18th and 19th, um, it still leaves three, like, you know, snow days. Just calculating out how many hours, that's, that's 18 hours, 18.6 hours. Rather than pushing the 45 minutes a day, we know the buses could come 15 minutes earlier because they, they did that before. We did 15 minutes early in the morning and a half an hour in the afternoon. And that's brutal, actually. Staying, the kids will be here till 3.30, staff staying for 3.45. The paras um, pretty much got gypped and it was not done correctly. Um, but if we could do 30 minutes um, over 38 days, that gives you 19 hours, so we're more than covering that time. Um, starting, just a suggestion, starting on April 28th, which is, gives us one day uh, to come back after April vacation to June 19th, would be that Friday. Um, most of the professional staff preferred a morning start, if possible. I'm not sure the bus could get us here for the half an hour in the morning. Kids are fresh, this, this age, they're ready to go in the mornings. And this building gets unhealthy hot. It's like a brick oven, especially the old building. To be here that late in the day, that late in the summer, it's, um, it's really uncomfortable. And this is the nature's classroom year again. A lot of fifth and sixth graders checking out, checking out after nature's classroom, which is the last week in May, um, right before uh, the June. So just, just a couple of time suggestions that we could do 15 and 15 before school and after school. We really appreciate just looking at that um, to, to um, not have to be here quite so late. Well, it, it certainly looking at going to the 25th is certainly, it's going, that, that's certainly going late. It's been an unusual year. One of the things that concerns me is though, is doing this, this scramble at, at, at this time of year. And, I would really like us as a board, as a, more, more as an administration, to look at how we can, going forward, maybe, maybe not this year, but certainly going forward, look at how we can maybe rearrange things rather than have to scramble to do it. That came up in our email, but the trail is definitely, could we just add 15 minutes every day at some point and kind of assume that, well, that would maybe be equivalent of uh, four snow days, and if we 
had four snow days, then that's taken care of. We only had two. Well, we work 15 minutes extra day. It was just, it's kind of a risk thing. But yeah, but that, so that, that I, I would be more in favor, you know, of, of, of thinking along those lines of looking at making a permanent change uh, rather than having to do this ad hoc because it's just, it, because it throws everybody uh, up in the air. Even having to give up a PD day, I mean, it means uh, we would probably have people lined up for it to come in and we'd have to cancel them and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> so, and the and the bus company, while while they did do it then, they've done it for us. I know they have. I mean, I, I don't think we can assume that they will do it again at no charge. Um, just I, I just I just don't think we can assume that. Um, anyway, uh, other thoughts from the from the board or or, or administration? Uh, yeah, I'll have to look through this. It just seems. I mean, just for my own opinion, I don't really know what you get out of an extra 15 minutes. Um, well, okay. Well, we don't know the buses can do that yeah, in, the morning, I mean, in the morning either. So, I mean, that's the, the part that makes it difficult is to make it work, I think it has to be something that we've... I'd rather see it be something we do something permanently. I'd rather look forward to some sort of a, a, a with it does get very hot in, in, in this brick building. And for us to find a way to be ending school earlier is better anyway, I think, for us as a as a school district. Um, yeah, I mean I think it's a great idea to look at different options and, and, and build your calendar appropriately looking into that because th this Quite frankly, it shouldn't be a surprise because your, your end date was on a Wednesday, the 17th. So it only gives you two days. I mean, yeah. typically in a normal winter, you're going to have more than two days for, for snow days or, or other things that happen. It's rare that you have, like last year, I think we had one or... Uh, yeah, last year we had, yeah, that, we had one. That, that's rare. Yeah. So, you know, it, when you're building the calendar it, it, for the following year, I mean, you're already, you, you started to end your year at the 17th, so you knew you were going to bump into that last week. I mean, it's just, so I, I like the idea of kind of looking ahead, and if it's building, like you said, building it in at the beginning of the year and then adjusting at the end if we don't need it, I mean, that, that makes some sense. Or look at, look at shortening some of your... Uh, either Christmas break or picking up a day in, in, in August or two there, um, you know, every day or two you pick up during the year just helps out at the end. And, and certainly, it's not it's not my place to say it. it would be up to the professionals to decide. But it, you know, the PD day, if you made it a, a student day, then the teacher it would be just staff that extra day without students is what you were saying, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That, Coming back on that. I mean, that's. I mean, I I would leave that up to the educators to decide. Um, on, on cutting it back that one day if they felt it was really just wise. Yeah, and with, with, the, with the coronavirus the way it is, yeah. I, I mean, we, we're unknown for the no, next month true. or so, so yeah, that's I true. mean, who knows how that's going to play out either, whether we're going to need to revisit this or, or yeah, that's, not. <laughs> there may be no school anywhere by the time we're done yet. But I would, I would agree strongly that, that, you know, Look at those things when you're setting your calendar because if you're if you're ending your school year on the 17th, which is a Wednesday, you know you're going into the next week almost all the time. Well, I think. Um, any other questions from them? Yeah, I mean, I I tend to think that it's worth looking into seeing if we can make something like this happen for this year and also planning maybe better for contingencies next year. I mean, half an hour maybe isn't. A ton of time, but also, as um, as Gail pointed out, when students are getting into the last couple weeks of June, they're checked out anyway, and it's so hot. And the um, your point about the Marshwood siblings is well taken. Uh, they already go so much less, it seems, um, <laughs> and to have them, you know, that far off really cuts into families' vacation time and. Um, all that kind of stuff. So uh, maybe it's not possible, but I think it's worth looking into. That's my thought on the, uh, on the topic. All right, and, and so it, and it, it, it probably doesn't hurt to look into it, and, but if we're talking now maybe half, half an hour in the morning, right? And that would be a discussion with the bus company mostly, right? 
If, if the board uh, goes in that direction and would like, I will call the bus company. I'll look into you know what time adjustments we can do. Um, and then I suppose that would mean a decision at, at the, your April meeting as to what that might look like. Yeah, which makes it very late. To, well, it gives us time. For, we need, it gives us a week or so to, before vacation to get it ready. And, uh, well, I think it's worth getting the information. Let's, let's get, so it, it sounds like the board. That was just what I, what I think. Tom nodding. What do you guys think? Yeah. Mike, any thoughts? Yeah. No, I definitely think, I think it's worth looking into. I mean, 30 days early, or 30 minutes early to start. I think it's reasonable. It's just, if you look at our school board meeting on the 9th of April, though, to start on the 28th of April, you're only giving parents mm -hmm. two weeks notice to. Yeah, what do you, what do you think of that? That's tough, you know. I mean, some families sure they'll be able to do it easy, but then there's a families who adjusting the schedule with uh, multiple siblings. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Difficult. Yeah. So I don't know if maybe we could get the answer sooner than later. I don't know how we could meet between four Well, possible. we can. We could call a special meeting if we needed to to make a decision on this um, once we get the information. And I mean, this is all, in some ways, hypothetical, and, and we just really don't know what's going to happen over the next time. Yeah. If things are changing so rapidly with the... Especially if we have another weather event. Well, another weather event or COVID-19. I mean, any of these things are... Yeah, we have had late March storms. Yeah. But let's, let's, um, let's find out if the bus company could accommodate it because I, I, it, I, I don't know how tight they are between the Marshwood runs and, and, uh, and getting them there. Let's just see if it's even possible. Sure. 15, even splitting at 15 or 15... Certain consideration. consideration. So uh, ideally, ha uh, 30 minutes in the morning. But I think that that seemed to be the the preferred time for just because of the kids' energy um, and the temperature of the building. And those of you with young with young children, uh, but you know, you, how, how, 15, easy, how easy will it be to get your uh, six-year-old out of half an hour? My son's normally sitting there in the morning asking when it's time to go. He'd be fine. Well, so let's so let's at least get the information okay. and see if they would do it at, at, at you know without having to put on extra buses because I'm, I'm I almost think they ran extra buses for us, but well, last time we did it, but I don't I don't I don't know for sure. Okay, so let's I'll at find least, out. Let's at least find that out. And and okay. I'm sorry, Gail. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, and and I think more importantly. As we go forward, I know we set the next year's calendar like over the summer, I think, right? Pretty much August, September. Um, we already set it? Yeah, it's coming up. Yeah, we set or the end before the end of this year, yeah. the next year's calendar yeah. gets set. And I think that so so maybe more importantly, find out from the bus company what could happen. Well, both you know, possibly this year, we'll really concentrate on next year, on on a 30-minute early start. That is what I'm hearing from. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just saying that, that the question is going to be twofold. What about this year, bus company? But also, really seriously, next year for like a 30-minute early start, right? I mean, that's something the union would agree to. And uh... well, you don't know. Well, we'll find we'll out. Let's get the inf bridge. let's get the information. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I mean, I, I know I know year after year. Um, I know that year after year, the educators have often asked for, for, for just more instruction time. And, and I think more instruction time in one day is a better way to do it rather than stretch out into the, into the, the summer. So if that can work. I wish more of them were here to say that. <laughs> well, I, absolutely. I mean, I've, I've heard it loud and clear yeah. for a number of years, as, as anyone who has sat on the board has heard it. And, uh, you know, so, and I think, so if there's a way we can do that, it would be great to build it into the calendar and then perhaps not have to go mm -hmm. so late. So we'll get that information, and um, and if, if it if it looks like something that can work, we'll we'll um, let you know and get together again, at, perhaps to to talk about. It. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob, and thank you for your input on that. <coughs> so uh, very quickly, the next thing on the new business was the candidate sign up at town hall. Um, so for so I think for the first time it was at town hall rather than at the SAU office. And I heard from a number of people who signed up that they loved it. So you had to sign up, Aaron. What did you think? It was it was easy. 
took five minutes? Because you've done both. No, I was a write in. Oh, oh. Back in the day. When only when nobody ran. Back in the day. <laughs> when nobody ran. How about how about you, Mike? You signed up? I thought it was really easy. Um, at the end of the process, I said, that it, really? That's all I had to do? So, I haven't done it any other way, but it's not going to be a very you know, the, the difference is that you didn't have to travel to the SAU office in Summersworth. And so, and, and I know that the, uh, uh, the moderator and the clerk were very pleased. And I have to say, it was fine for me. They gave me the information back okay. to me. So, it was no issue for me. To so, I think we'll plan to continue that way. I mean, I don't, just, just letting you know, in essence. Okay. So. I know it takes a little bit of communication, but... Yeah, but we communicate, Kate okay. and I communicate, so it's, it's Excellent. really no impact for me, so... Excellent. Any other uh, thoughts on that? All right, the facility update. Now, I don't... It, it, um, is there a general facility update? I know Tom had some things he wanted to address, and is there a general facilities update as well? No, I just put a couple of things in my report, yeah. general information for you folks, but... Okay. Tom, I know you wanted to uh, talk about a few things. Yeah, I had an opportunity sometime, I think, in 2020, <laughs> maybe it was January, <laughs> to take a uh, stroll up to the attic. Um, uh, I went up there. Uh, Dick gave me a tour of the, of what you know, what that looks like. And more, I was thinking in lines of the um, the storage. Um, area that we had talked about before um, budget season. So I got a, an opportunity to go up there for the first time since 10 years on this board. I've never been up there before. And good grief. There's a lot of crap up there. Um, and it's been cleaned out. Yes. Yeah, well, here's the thing. And Dick explained this to me uh, you know, he was very diplomatic, but the thing is, we have um, the ventilation system. Folks are going to need to get up there to figure out how that's all going to look and where it's all going to go. All that, you know, all that duct work. But unfortunately, there is so much stuff up there. There's stuff up there I'm sure hasn't been moved in a decade, maybe longer. Um, there are flags like those, piles of them. There's a picture of George Washington in an old frame. This thing has to be the original picture. But the glass is all gone. But the, the picture is like a hundred years old. Um, but in all seriousness, there's a lot of stuff up there that um, student records, um, individual teachers, I'm sure you guys know you have like certain spots. And textbooks I'm looking up, you know, opening them up, and there is a picture of the current leader of Russia, Mr. <laughs> Khrushchev. You know what I'm saying. It's just a lot of stuff up there that is never, ever going to see daylight in a classroom. So I asked it, you know, what did he think? What's the plan? And he, and he was honest. There, first of all, there, it's it's really dangerous to go up there because the, the, the plywood that is it's kind of rickety, that is over the, that basically is the floor. But the other thing is that um, the ventilation system, they're going to need to go up there to figure out how that's going to look, and then they're going to eventually have, you know, there's going to be installation. But all of this stuff is in the way. Um, and I haven't even mentioned the stuff that has to do with plays from days gone by. Um, it's unreal. My concern, though, is that a lot of the stuff, even with the from the plays that was done, you know, that were done in the past, will never ever be used again. And it, the stuff, it, it, when you have pieces of, you know, things that are covered in paper, it's just moisture up there. It's, it stinks. So, what's the plan? You know. If the stuff is going to get used again, then it definitely needs to be stored. And it needs to be stored where it's, it's safe for people to actually get to it, um, but also to keep it from you know, deterior, deteriorating over time. Because it's just up in this attic. 
it's cold, it's damp. Um, but so, so, Tom, are we? Are we um, well, I'm getting. To <laughs> are we getting to your point that you can't? Okay. So the, it's it's two part. The first thing is we absolutely need a another storage okay. compartment. I also had a chance to go out. Uh, where oh, am it's I? right. Yeah, up, it's right okay. out there. Uh, tons of fans <laughs> that are no longer going to be used. Uh, there are a lot of other teacher materials out there in bins. The hard part about this is it just can't be one person that does it. Uh, it, it, but does it, what? it does what? Moves all this stuff oh, oh. down. There's just so much stuff. So I asked Dick, okay, how, you know, what do you think would be reasonable? And then I had some suggestions. Um, he's not, you know, against bringing all the stuff down and having everybody go through their stuff, the teachers, ours, going through all the stuff to figure out, okay, this is definitely going to be saved, this can go. Because some of the stuff really is trash. Uh, and I understand why we don't have everybody running up into the attic because it's not it's not safe. But the other thing is the stuff that is kept, where is it gonna go? And that's where that other storage piece comes in. Uh, I had suggested, or at least I'm suggesting now that perhaps uh, when the warmer weather comes, that perhaps maybe a portion of a, a teacher's workshop day could be used to maybe just go through some of this stuff. Well, let's um, let's bring it down to maybe some something that, that the board would have some control over because we we took the storage shed off yeah, the um, out of the budget for for this coming year. We mm -hmm. took the storage shed off. Uh, for a number of reasons. Partly we knew we were going to clear up the fan space because we're going to put overhead fans in every classroom um, that need them. And, and partly because no one wants to encourage more storage. But if there's, an, if there's, if, if there's a, a logical reason, a, a way, uh, some logical storage <coughs> that we created so that everyone would know how much storage would be available and then clear out the attic and, 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 and any way they choose to do it and, and go through things. and, and it, but they have a, anyway, I think we should talk about what we can talk about, which would be whether or not we really need a storage shed, how big it would be, how much space it would take up, those kinds of things. And, and Well, my thought is that the stuff up in the attic can't stay there. It just can't. Right, so that's why we should yeah. be talking about a storage area. But you are, you, will, you do have, you have student records that I'm sure have to be kept for a certain number of years, I'm assuming. That's an assumption. There are student uh -huh. records. On there. <coughs> well, I didn't find any of mine, but I didn't go to the school. So. I think to start with, if if the if the board is is directing us to um, start with just simply cleaning out, you know, cleaning out this with the fans. If we're no longer going to be using them, we can dispose of them or sell them or whatever mm -hmm. we need to do with those. Mm -hmm. And cleaning out the attic of the stuff that we know that we can get rid of. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have a better idea of, I mean, there are going to be some questionable stuff that we're going to need the teachers to take a look at, and is this valuable, do we need to keep it? But like you said, I think there's things up there that we can clean some of it out, just yeah. just clean it out. But I saw that, you know, each, you know, teacher has their own section. So I'm assuming that everybody's going to want to go through all their, their own that's stuff. Well, I think so it's going to have to be done in stages because yeah. Yeah. It's, this is not a one-day thing. No, this, this, yeah. is not a, <laughs> this is not a one-day thing at all. Yeah, but, but I think bringing it down yeah. to that, it, because because uh, one of the reasons we took the storage shed off is that until we knew what we really needed for storage space, what I don't want to see is is, is any area, is, is a dozen storage sheds dotted all over the place. Uh, it needs to be more... Um, like a, like a whole storage. Yes, like we'd be renting out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'd much rather see it be much more um, you know, compact, as, as compact as it can be. And the, let's face it, the, the space you have gets filled. It's a, it's a law of nature, I believe. So, um, so I, I, I like um, that we've had this discussion, and I think that it, it would be, I think, um, 
with Tom's uh, sort of push on this, I, I think I would certainly uh, agree with, uh, with, with the rest of the board feels of, of directing uh, the administration to, we know fans are going, the overhead fans are going in, you know, that yes, clean out the stuff we know we're not going to need, or wait until the overhead fans go in to get rid of them so we know what space we have there. Um, things, somebody to go through up there to say, well, you know, do we really need to keep student written, yeah, handwritten student records from 1946? I, mean, I don't know. I don't know how far back they go. Um, I, I, and I know there are globes and old books oh, yeah. and things like that up there, which... Collector's items. Yeah, possibly collector's <laughs> items. So, but, uh, th th but don't necessarily need to remain now in the school. So what the, how about uh, Mike and Aaron? How do you feel about that? When is this ventilation project? It has not been. We right for this coming year. It is a. Um, uh, it's going. It's going to be planned. They have to go up there basically and do a study. But essentially, the ventilation in this building really needs updating. If there's, let's just say it needs ventilating. There really isn't ventilation. <laughs> I only ask just to think of a timeline. You know, how much time do you actually? You know, it's have? the plans that they're coming up with that we budgeted for. So we would have at least a year. It would be, I would think we'd have at least done 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 tomorrow. Right. Not okay. all. Yeah. That's a good, good call. But keep in mind that we are going to continue to move stuff up there. Yeah, we, like, we're going to have the play next month. After that's all done, the stuff is going to end up going up those stairs. Just and they aren't really that. stairs, Mike. No, it's, it's really stairs. a, it's a uh, yeah. they're not really it's, stairs. It's a mobile stair. <laughs> it, it is. It, it's like when you're going to the top shelf at Home Depot, and they roll those wood, uh, metals. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like that. Yeah, it's more like a loft than an attic. Yeah, I remember correctly. It's actually dangerous. I'm surprised the teachers are still in there. I was like, wow, yeah, this is something else. So let's. So Tom, does that make yeah. sense to start with that? Yeah, absolutely. To get that absolutely. going. And um, okay. Was there anything else that you wanted to? No, I I did have a chance though to to. Uh, um, Again, I went into this unit as well oh, yeah. to see what that was look, looking like, and it's very, very packed. A lot of stuff. Um, so uh, the reason I say that is because I don't know is there is a lot of there's not a lot of room to move in there, you know, to use that. I mean, you, you're going to have some opportunity, but not a tremendous amount. And is there room back there to put more storage in that same area? Did you, did you Where you need to see here? That? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I used the room to build more storage. Yeah, but I mean, you would have more of a, um, yeah. almost like one of those, I don't know, trailer type things. You could. Yeah. That size. Oh, I see. But there's, yeah. Okay. It's really going to depend on what's left. Okay, so let's get so let's get started thank on you. the process. Let's yeah. get that started. All right, and thank you for that. That's yeah. good. That's good to know. The next discussion, I oh, yes. Sorry, one thing, one other thing under facilities. Mm. Uh, I, I guess just to get a, a, a um, opinion of the board, we had talked uh, last year, I believe, about the safety and security of the front entrance yes. and the back entrance. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and we got some estimates on reconfiguring the back back. That was that was rather costly, uh, and ultimately too costly to, to get it done. Um, Rich and I have talked a number of times about the front, and if there's anything kind of lower cost that we could do right by the main uh, office, as well as the nurse's office and door there. Uh, and I guess I'm just asking the board: Would you like us to to see if we can get some tentative figures on perhaps a uh, a, a door coming across by the nurse's office that would secure that, a secure door for the office, maybe a talk through, and maybe even uh, taking a, a, another exit from the office through where the copy machine is and out that wall there. Um, it, it may be a, a manageable cost. Um, we haven't gotten estimates yet, but if the board would like, we can explore that a little further. Absolutely. Um, it's, it, it's one of the concerns uh, we heard recently uh, from, uh, from the union presidents that um, it's something that uh, it, it would be really nice to be able to have this building be a little bit more secure. Um, and, and, it, and certainly if it was something, it's something that if it could be done 
in the existing space, and that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, we've got some ideas, but neither one of us is an architect. Right, and I was just going to caution you. I, I do the same thing. I was going to caution you, but I was going to caution you because I recognize it. Um, not to not to present a solution to someone, but to say, here's the space. Right. Here are some things we could, you know, yeah. we've been thinking about. What's the best way to do it? Um, believe me, I'd be happy to, you know, write, draw it all for you too. But no. Um, yeah, I think that would be. I, I think that would be a very good thing to do. Okay, we'll try to move forward with that and All get some, some ideas to bring back to the board. In the past, too, there was some money available um, from was it Homeland Security? Public security. infrastructure. Yeah. Fund? Yeah. Is that no Homeland Security um, specifically? Yeah. We would have to check on that. We don't need to check on that. I don't know, know of happened. any money presently. Um, I know there was in the last two to four years that, that came through. Um, the police chief often knows about Homeland yeah, Security. I was going to suggest that. Um, he's the one who knew about the camera on one of for instance, oh. when we did the cameras. We can, we can um, certainly check into it and find out. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Just, just to, it's worth checking, but yeah. uh, also I mean, this would be a good time to find out now so that it could be done um, as soon as possible. Sure. Thank you, Bob, for bringing that up. Uh, the next new business piece is uh, the school board retreat. I just wanted to get it on everybody's radar that we usually hold a retreat each year. I was looking at Mike because he doesn't know we do this each year. And um, we usually do it on an evening from like 5 to 8. Um, wherever it's convenient for everyone. We've done it at the SAU office in the past. It's just the board, uh, the principal, the superintendent. And we get together and we set our goals for the coming year. And we use those goals, they're on the back of our agenda, we use those goals um, to, to, to guide us for what we want to do, get, get accomplished during that year. And, and we also use those goals to sort of um, measure how the superintendent's doing. It's, it's his job to help us meet those goals. So we do that as well. So just letting you know, so, so certainly by our April meeting, if people could come with dates and stuff, I can't remember when we've done it in the past. I think we do it pretty much toward the end of the school year, or I think it was in June last year. June, yeah. June or so. <coughs> just, just get it on people's radar. That was just a mention for that. Thank you. Oh, and while we're talking about facilities, one of the joys of uh, meeting the public on Tuesday is that you learn about different things that are going on. So we understand that the school is in desperate need of um, uh, nets on the soccer goal. <coughs> We may have some nets. We've been waiting so okay. to get into the oh. shed. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and we need to find out if our current nets are still usable. Okay. Um, and if they are, we have nets. We just need to get them out there in the spring for the kids. Um, and if we don't, then and it's figuring out how we can get. Some and if you don't, I, I believe we, I believe we have, we might have, we might have enough money in one of our lines to, uh, to, 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 to say, please go ahead and do that. Okay, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yes. Okay. I've been on top of that for a few months. I'm sure you have. Thank, thank you very we much. I had some questions about the water fountain. Um, if you go into the gym now, it's in process of being looked at. It's, it's not an easy fix from what Dick has told me. Uh, he had a plunger going on it yesterday. Um, yeah, it's something that's been like. He's put it off because of other priorities. Yeah. You know, the whole yeah. other water system piece was his priority <laughs> uh, because you know, we have other places that kids can get water, right. but um, he is working on that and it's driving him crazy. He has to walk away sometimes. <laughs> Thank you, Red. It's the joys of meeting the public. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's the only chance people get to talk to board members. Yeah. So. Our, uh, our last retreat was July 15th. Oh, thank you, July 15th. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as, as time goes on. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, so old business now, we are, we're going to talk about the non-resident tuition discussion. Um, Bob sh has shared with us that we do have a, 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 a tuition, non-resident tuition policy that we've had. Um, and it, it is our goal this evening to actually set a tuition rate, I believe. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to fill us in on um, sure. that? Sure. Uh, you, you've got a policy yeah, here. Yeah. We've had requests in the past of, of um, people that might want to tuition their kids into Rollins, Rollinsford 
school. Um, right now, just to give you kind of a point of reference, the, the tuition to Marshwood is 11.4. 11, 11, oh, it'll be 11.7 11, 11, this year. 7. Um, and if you look at our per pupil that's that's registered through the Department of Ed for Rollinsford, it's about 19.9. So, you know, kind of gives you a little bit. Uh, if somebody is, is tuition due, they would be responsible for transportation. So, you know, you, you got to take that into consideration as well. So, um, and special yeah. education too. Right? Special education. So, you, you know, you've got to. Uh, Kind of give you some guidelines on what you might want to consider. So, in in some of our earlier discussion, we, we it, it was made clear. I think we had the discussion, but special education would be paid for from the school district the child should be attending. So that would not be anything that we, so we would be reimbursed for special education costs should there be any with that with that with, with any student that tuitioned in. And transportation would not be included, would not be, we would not provide transportation for anyone tuitioning again. So those are two, two things that, that would bring down the cost. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment we have space, I mean, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't want to tuition in 20 students. Um, at the moment we have one request, I believe. Um, Bob has made clear, and, and, and certainly I agree, and I think the educators would agree that if we take a, if we tuition a student in, we would have to sort of believe that we will have them throughout their their their, their grade school experience. Mm -hmm. We can't just say, well, well, we'll decide next year on next year. We, we couldn't do that. We'd have to keep them, you know, we'd have to plan to keep them through. through. So what other things do we need to be thinking about? Well, then again, this is simply to, to set a, set a, a number. Uh, and, then, and then you would have the ability to, to look at each case individually and, and decide whether um, you know, that, that situation fits uh, class size, and, you know, enrollment of the grade, how many teachers, all nine yards. So um, this, this exercise really is to establish um, a number. And you know, certainly, um, it, this is this is it, it, in a way it, this is revenue. This would be, be, be revenue. I think I would be comfortable probably anywhere between thirteen and fifteen. Stab. I mean, do you have any other? Uh, like, uh, well, I, I mean, I, I think that uh, you know, you, in, in my mind, you wouldn't want to go below the Marshwood because that's what you're paying oh, for each of your, your high school kids. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I, I think that there are some benefits that residents get with the with the amount of or per pupil cost that that somebody uh, tuitioning in from the outside is not going to get. So I think it's reasonable to be lower than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if you if you were to set it at fourteen or fifteen thousand, you wouldn't have to revisit it for a while. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I mean, if you were if you were going lower than that, and, and Marshwood were to you know continue to rise, then you'd have to revisit it. But if it's at fourteen or fifteen, I, I would think that that would you know be able to be pretty stable for a few years anyway. Yes, and it wouldn't be, it, it, we wouldn't guarantee to somebody, while, while we would want to plan to keep them, we wouldn't guarantee that the tuition would stay the same every year. If something should happen, mm -hmm. that we would have to, you know, raise it. Um, so this is just to set a rate, it has nothing to do with the actual case we're going to talk about later in the public. I don't know, I think it would be maybe better to go a little bit closer to the Marshwood number, um, you know, if we, if we make it too much, then then people aren't going to do it, and it would be nice to have have some revenue when, when we can get it. Yeah, and, and while it's nice to have the revenue, it also it, it, you know it also fills out the school and, and, and you know it just keeps you know, it 
keeps 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 the staff uh, uh, employed and, yes. and all those other things too. So, uh, so you what 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 were you what would you think then? Like like thirteen, twelve, fifty? How low would you I was think? I'm gonna say between twelve and thirteen. <laughs> and that would be twelve. <laughs> <laughs> no, twelve thousand high five. <laughs> but I mean, I don't really know. I'm just thinking, you know, what what would I if I were going to do that for my child? I think. That maybe like between 10 and 13 ish would be kind of the, mm -hmm. the range. Mm -hmm. Mark, your thoughts? I am really unprepared for this conversation. Yeah, I, I, so, I realized uh, that, just throwing it at you. <laughs> I think, you know, you're really in the ballpark anywhere in there. I'm kind of leaning towards, you know, a little bit what Aaron's saying, that probably 13 in that round, just to stay a little closer to March. I don't have anything to base that off of other than just the numbers. That's true. Um, yeah, and it's and, and while while I, I understand that it, it, it Marshall gives us a um, a way to look at it. Marshwood, the Marshwood tuition is lower than the Summersworth tuition was when we were also tuitioning our students to Summersworth because the cost of education is higher in New Hampshire yeah. than it is in Maine. So that's important to know. Um, so I would not go lower than 13 uh, for that reason. Um, you know, it, you know we, we, our tuition agreement with, with Summersworth hit more what the New Hampshire rate would have yeah. been for, for someone. So and it included all the special ed. And it did include all the special ed. So that, oh, that's true. That was not separate. Oh, that's true. That wasn't all your special ed. Oh, that's true. So you didn't pay separate for those. That's true. Like yeah. you do now for Marshall. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it did not. No, I'm sorry. I'm talking about when we actually tuitioned, not when we were part of the area agreement. Oh, okay. When we actually sorry. tuitioned, uh, um, yeah. special ed was extra, yes. but it was uh, yeah, but it was tiered. in tiered. Yeah. Yeah. So you no, no, thank good. I know. I wanted to make. Yeah, because. But it was higher. It was it was probably about a thousand dollars higher per student. So well, I'd be willing to move. <laughs> <laughs> it makes things a little. But I also easier. understand. You know, we, we we don't want to make it necessarily prohibitive if we think it's a good thing for, for us to do as a, as a district. I think, I think we should set a rate. The argument is, is is very valid because we don't want to be scaring people off. Uh, you know, with a tuition that. Yeah. Frankly, we're, we're just throwing numbers out anyway. Um, but uh, I think 13 would be unreasonable. If we were to tuition somebody to Summersworth right now, what is that? I don't yeah. know. Um, we started, uh, so the, we, we had a three year deal with uh, Summersworth for when we moved all of our students to Marshalls. We allowed um, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders to finish out there, and it started at 11,000. And it went up three percent each year. It started at eleven five, I think. It went up on three percent each year. So we we're ending up at just over twelve. And that was three years ago now. Three years ago now. So, 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 I'd say 13 so thirteen kind of hits sort of where we are, and then we can. Yeah. Well, I, I, I it seems like we're coming to a consensus of thirteen. It may mean we might want to revisit it, you know, a little more. Yeah. Depending okay. on how things go, but so our rate. Uh, do we need a professional? Do we need a professional? Do we need a vote on that, or just a consensus? Um, I think that's fine because, like I said, you're going to vote on each individual right. request anyway. So we'll right. set the rate at that point. But that's basically what we'll need. So each request is negotiable at that point, or? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. That's a good question. Well, it it would be. I mean, each each request is up to the board on what you you're going to do. You don't. If you wanted to make a motion and set this, this as your tuition, then it would be consistent across the board. Or you can just do it, um, you know, as you approve each one. But that's up to you. Well, I would, I would probably prefer to set it so that we don't have to be, be um, doing I this. And if you made a motion to, to set your tuition for Rollins for grade school, um, then it would be set until you decide to change it. Because it's a slippery slope if yeah. you start you know, every individual case if you decide to talk about one. Yeah. I think that's a better way to go. And 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 to be clear, I mean, uh, we had a number of uh, Marshwood took take takes tuition students, uh, um, individual tuition students, and they took a number of Rollinsford residents 
uh, before before we had a, a contract with them to take all of our uh, all of our uh, seven through twelve students. But they they picked and chose the students they took. They did not take children with special needs. They did not take students with special needs. They did not take students that they did not think would do very well at Marshwood. And they made it very clear that that's what they were doing. So, uh, so, so those kinds of decisions we can also make if we, if we choose to. But, um, but I think setting a tuition rate so that we don't have to revisit it with every, you know, should we get an influx, yeah. right? I think it's easier too if someone calls and says, "Is this a possibility? Is it? If you have a yeah. number." At any point down the road, if the, if the board decides to revisit that, they certainly you certainly could do that. Right, right. And, and we're not guaranteeing it for the entire time they're here. We're guaranteeing it for the first year that they come in. Would you year by year? Yeah. Well, no, I'm I'm saying that our tuition rate would be sure. Uh, uh, we we it, we could change the tuition rate at any time, in essence. We have had an interest in it, and we have, staff. I know that, I think staff in the past occasionally had people in, and I don't know if we made them pay or not. I, I, I was not on the board at that time. I would, I, I would not have voted for having the staff pay for having the staff. Usually that, when they get in, if it's too high, they'll say. Never mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's usually what they're determined. Yeah, that's true. All right, so um, a motion then, please, for uh, setting up the tuition rate. I make a motion with uh, tuition rate to thirteen thousand. Second. Second. Second from Aaron. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Tuition is set. For the foreseeable future, for ten minutes. <laughs> All right, uh, that concludes that. Now, oh, where do we still have one to do? Sorry. Um, I'll try to be two months in one. Uh, all right, we have our. Uh, let's do our. We're gonna um, switch the um, switch the order on these, and and Mike, we will not expect you to answer anything about nine point two. It's the second reading of. The uh, ones we did way back in January. January. Does anyone remember them? So if these were the policies for um, cri um, crisis prevention and response, <coughs> emergency plans, employment references, student conduct, and student discipline and due process. Those were the ones we did back in January for the first reading. And. They are all recommended or required. So, any further discussion on those? No, they look fine to me. Then let's uh, then a motion to accept all uh, all of the policies under 9.2. I make a motion to accept the policies under 9.2. A second. Uh, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Mike, please refrain. Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, and now the first reading, and Mike, if you haven't had a chance to read them, we understand. And this is the first reading. We are not taking any action on them. Let's see if we'll take action on our, at our next meeting. So, um, mandatory code of conduct reporting all employees, staff conduct, communicable, communicable disease head lice, and apparently the actual um, medical term for head lice was says pediculosis. <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, and, and reporting child abuse. So, uh, questions, comments, concerns. I had a question on the head lice. Yeah, too. Yes. Uh, students known to have head lice will remain in class, provided the student is comfortable. Is this mm -hmm. a real thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Would you like to go further they with that? They do not have to be sent home, but oftentimes the teachers will say they're they're uncomfortable. They you know, and, and they will be asked. And a lot of times the parents will say, "I'll just come get them." But then once they go home, they have to stay home until it's they're clear treated, and they come back mm -hmm. and I'll check them. Okay. I had head lice. It was very traumatic. It is. 
Which is we're very a long time ago. We respect the The nurses, the district nurses, sat with Lori Lane and went over it um, prior to your first reading of that. And um, that's okay. We're just checking. I remember. And they're only allowed in if the midwives have been uh, treated and are no longer. You should appreciate it. There are homeopathic treatments. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the pesticide treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And my, actually, my question on that is it, it, so. Since apparently the old policy was really only about uh, communicable diseases, but only about head lice, do we have anything else on communicable diseases? Do we have any other policies? I, I, I didn't quickly see any. I don't believe so. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll talk, talk about whether or not we should have some. Kudos to Maine for um, putting down the record, <laughs> taking the proper vote on that referendum there. All right. Well, we'll leave that at that then. Um, now, it's interesting, I wrote these, I didn't print out the whole thing, I just wrote down the question. Hmm. On staff conduct, I think, oh, I, I, that, that's it. So on GBEB, staff conduct, and I should pull it up. Do you come up? Mm -hmm. there's, there is, um, there's something, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Oh, it's very short, isn't it? I think I had a question about whether or not um, a collective bargaining agreement trumps the law, or the law or the state law trumps the collective bargaining agreement. Um, the collective bargaining agreement can add to the law, but it can't take away from. Okay. So if it is, for instance, if it's in the law, it's it can't in the law. broaden the law. It can no. narrow the law, but it can't broaden the right. law. Okay. That's what was my question. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> Anyone else have any questions? Or All right, then. Uh, that, that's our discussion period. We will move on. <clears throat> and we will revisit these next uh, at our next meeting for um, uh, a vote to approve or not. All right. Uh, playground improvements we've already gone over, right? And now we have a couple of personnel things we'll do here before we went to non-public. Uh, Dr. Gradomsky, will start us off on the uh, retirement of Eric Thornton. So the first one is from Eric Thornton. Um, it says, thank you for, uh, let me see, uh, I'll be retiring. Uh, from Rollinsford Grade School, effective April 1st. My last day of work will be March 31st. It's been nice working with you, the staff, and the, among the students that have been here for so many years. Uh, sincerely, Eric Thorne. So we need a motion to accept his resignation? Yes. Yeah, so uh, motion, make a motion to accept Eric Thornton's resignation. And so somewhat reluctantly, I will ask, I'll ask if there's any further discussion on Rick's uh, resignation. He's done tremendous service here at this school. Mm -hmm. so, you. All right, uh, then uh, no further discussion. Uh, all in favor of accepting, accepting uh, Rick's uh, resignation, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the custodial nomination, we need a discussion on Okay. We will be going into non-public after this. So then we have future meeting dates right there um, at the end of the agenda. I'm, I am going to question, are we having the uh, March SAU meeting? Um, Often that's done just if we need one. It is still scheduled. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can get in touch with the uh, chair and see if they still would like that or whether they're just going to do the... The, the May. There's one in May as well, which is here, which is here as yeah. well. I mean, traditionally, if we if we cut one out, it's usually the March meeting. Mm -hmm. But um, I will find out if there's a need. Check to that. on that. Let us know. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, school events, long list of those there. I think people know about those. So we'll move on with closing comments from visitors. 
I've come. I would like to clarify the play props and stuff. <laughs> we do reuse those. Currently, the maid in Little Mermaid is wearing the costume from the housekeeper in Peter Pan. <laughs> um, the benches that um, Mr. Franks built for us have been used in at least two, if not three, three plays. Um, and last year, the um, Maisie's tree, this year is going to be Ariel's Grotto. So just different things are going to be painted on. Um, very rarely, unless it's specific to something that we can't change, do we put things back up in the attic and just leave them there. Some of that stuff from the plays are from before Amanda or Jean did them. Last year, I think it was, yes, last year, Jean found saddle shoes up there that they wore for maybe a day, and the soles fell off. So some of that stuff is from like the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. It's not stuff that we use. So some can be removed. Yes, and Jean, I know, would love to have a shed that she can get stuff and look through stuff to see what we need or what we have and move it. I mean, right now, because the play's a month away, we're storing stuff in the gym office and in the stairs to the attic on the stage so that we have it each night to practice. So if it was in a shed where at least other times we could get it without having to go in the attic, it would be much easier. And Tom, there are stairs to the attic besides those metal ones. Yeah, they slide. No. <laughs> and they go straight up. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Any, 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 and the play any is after the next board meeting, the 10th and the 11th. Hopefully. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Everything has to come with a little caveat now. Maybe so. Uh, Tracy? Tracy Lorian. Um, I, I do know upstairs in the attic there's, some, there's an area of historical stuff. So we have some old desks and chairs and different things like that. I haven't been up there in a little while, but I do know that there are some stuff that are labeled up there also that um, are original with the building and stuff like that that has been used when we went, we did a, we set up a classroom in like a historical thing that was so cool. Um, so there are some stuff in the attic that are, I believe it's all labeled and stuff that is historic with the, the main building and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I wasn't saying that everything up there is no, 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 no. garbage. No. Okay, it's that's just... it. Okay, it's good. It's good. It's good. We're not the... Can I just say one more thing? Is it it's not about the plot. Is it about the attic? Yeah. But it'll be quick, I promise. And a shed. We, because we're an inquiry-based school, we can't plan that even every other year that we're going to be studying ancient civilization so we can pull out the ancient civilization stuff. We have stuff that, yeah, we try to reuse it, you know, using measuring cups and all that stuff. But we do have some stuff that's not used every year. But we also don't want to have to buy it again if it's used the third year. Do you know what I mean? I do. Thank you very much. We appreciate everybody's concern about everything that's in the attic. <laughs> School board members are not going to go through each thing and say, this has to go to that. So believe me, that is not our intention here. Celia. Other comments besides the attic? Yes, please. <laughs> um, my child is one of the ones that was supposed to go on to the Young Inventors Convention, and we got an email this morning around 9.30 saying that it's been postponed oh. due to the coronavirus with a yet-to-be-determined date. Um, uh, for the end-of-the-year school calendar, I have two comments. REC has already put out their start date of June 29th, so if a decision is made and we're going to go into the last week of June or something like that, could we just be kept in the loop? Um, we do have an email address that you can reach us at that Rich has, and we have connections here at the school. Just keep us informed because we would like to set up the 28th to be ready for camp, and we want to make sure it's feasible with the school too. And then as a parent, I have the opposite perspective as Mike. My children don't necessarily get ready to be on time, so I really encourage you to plan ahead for the future and maybe put it on throughout the year, an extra 15 minutes, because it's hard for my kids to adjust 
partway through the year and to have to only do it for 8 to 12 weeks when you've already been in a schedule that's consistent for the last six months is sometimes difficult to change. Thank you. And I'll just remind you to also to have the Rural Commission be in touch with the school itself too. So, yep. So they know what's going on. Any other comments from public? All right, any closing comments from the board? One question. Yes. Um, so with the withdrawal passing, what's the next step? Yes. That? Excellent. Um, the withdrawal has passed, which means <clears throat> that as of July 1st, we will no longer be part of SAU 56. We already have a contract in place that, that has been signed, and I assume that now... Yeah, I believe the next step, I need to get in touch with the um, State Board of Education. They've already approved the, the plan that's already gone to them, and we've already got notification. I believe the next step is it goes back to them, and they identify a, an SAU number for Rollinsford. So I'll bring that back to the board. So there's really not much we need to do then between now and July? No, essentially, except getting our new SAU number, uh, the work was all done ahead of time, including the contract with, with Summersworth. So I, I, I feel that it's, the withdrawal committee did an excellent job getting everything set up. Bob and he both worked and got things done uh, for us, and um, it was great. Yeah, the contract is all set, the budget is all set, everything's in place for next year. So. Yeah, which is nice. It means, and, and if it had not passed, we'd now be scrambling. So thank goodness it passed. <laughs> a anything else, Mike? No, that was it. Thank you. Tom? Uh, about the attic. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is there's a lot of stuff up there. Once that wall comes down, I'm sure there's a lot of historic stuff there. The place stuff I saw looked like as you said, had been there since the first run of Corey's line. So, yeah. Uh, Kansas is still hanging. Uh, that, that's enough. Okay. Let's <laughs> not have a back and forth. This is just common. Thanks, Tom. Well done. Well done. Okay. I can't wait to see some of that stuff. Yeah? I'm good. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk about the attic. Yeah, like a bigger chair. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, thank you for finding a room because I, 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 I uh, wanted a little more just Yeah, this is better. Um, so, thank you very much for that. We'll be back. Uh, thank you. We do have non-public, so um, we'll take a, a, a roll call vote to move to non-public, please, and see anybody else when we see them. Judy Nelson. Yes. Tom Coons. Yes. Eric Cavanaugh. Yes. Mike Block. Okay.